it's the Bible speaking that God called light out of darkness. That means at every point in time, if you are smart enough to understand, darkness is not entirely a bad system. Darkness has the propensity or the capacity to be pregnant of light because where was light? It was inside the darkness that God was looking at. And that principle in Genesis chapter 1 should be one of the fundamental ideas that many of us should carry as we enter this year. It's going to be our great year of exploit. Trust me, to go into exploit, you will not stroll into it. There will be oppositions. There will be things that will go against you, but we are trying to encourage you to say, no matter how strong the darkness is, no matter how strong the oppositions are, they are pregnant of your light. Somebody say, believe in amen. amen. And that's the first mentality. They are pregnant of your light. So I know somewhere along the line, the church, in the bid of us trying to make you conscious of what God has in stock for you and the consciousness of the devil's uh, uh, itinerary against us, we overemphasize the power of darkness rather the advantage of darkness. There is advantage in darkness. In Psalm 139 verse 12, the Bible says, even the darkness hides not from God, but the night shines like the day. The darkness and the light are both the same in the eyes of God. So God does not see any difference. Why you are saying there's a casting down, God is looking at you and saying, this thing will bring lifting up for you. It's just for you to calm down a bit and ask God, I learned one thing when we were in retreat, myself and my wife, in the last couple of days before the, end, the year ended. One of the things we found out that day was that whenever you are in a confused state, please, can you do yourself a favor and run to God? You know, we used to say it as a cliche. I always try to question everything I say. When people say, oh, run to God, what does it mean? It simply means shut yourself away from every distraction. TV, telephones, even if it's for one hour. Can you take time to just go to God and say, I, this situation that is happening, I don't understand it, but I know because you said you call light out of darkness, it might look bad, but there is something beautiful about this situation. Lord, can you help me out? If there's any strategy you guys will use this year, is that strategy I want you to work with. Every time things do not go the way you think they should go, step back a bit and ask, what are you saying, God? What are you saying, Lord? In Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 2, I love this scripture very well because it seems to depict my idea of how negative situations are supposed to be dealt with. Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, sing, O barren. Come on now. Barren looks like a negative situation. Nobody enjoys the word barren, whether for human beings or for the earth. There is no pleasure when it comes to a barren situation. But the instruction that is coming here says, when a barren situation comes, instead of the natural response that everybody is supposed to give to it, which is to cry, to sober, to, 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 to feel depressed, he said, no, don't do that. This is an instruction from God. He said, do not do that. He said, what I want you to do, anytime you see a barren situation, every time you see a dark situation, every time you see oppositions that are against your destiny, he said, what you should do first is to what? Sing. This singing, you know, is not singing of r and It's not singing of Raga. It's singing of the joy of the Lord. Singing as though what God is saying to you is, even though the opposition is staring at you, I want to show you something else that you are not seeing. And the only way you can do this is to sing, oh, parent, what an advice, a very contrary advice. An advice where some of us as pastors, where you come to see us, and the summary of our discussion with you will be, sing, oh, barren, and you think something is wrong with us. And most times, what many people say to me at that point is, Pastor, you don't understand. I truly understand. It's just that my response might not be what you understand. That's all. I truly understand what you're going through. I truly understand that you just lost your job, you just lost a loved one, you just lost something. But based on the one who knows the end from the beginning, he said the force that you require to just oppose this situation, to turn around, to favor you, is that as it comes, sing, oh he said, if you have not born a child, break forth 
into singing. So when I saw the word break forth, it now explained to me what he was trying to say. He was trying to explain to us that this singing that I talked about is not the natural singing because you see your wife or your, you see your girlfriend or you see your fiancé. It's not that natural singing, no. It's not the one that you sing because you see a lot. You know, you know that inspiration that comes. When all this while you'll be expecting some, you know, and all of a sudden, you're, even in service. I mean, this is always service sometimes when they are looking at their phone, they just start laughing. <laughs> they just start laughing. Just like, I just, you, you that you say, you say, Pastor did not say anything funny. What's wrong with this man? Now lie, you. Zero, 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 zero. Just shoot. And the guy just, they don't force people to sing in that one. It's not the people that they are talking to here. Yeah, you don't understand. Those ones, the singing comes, do you get what I'm trying to say? They don't beg you to sing when that kind of thing happens. But when you hear the word break forth, there's an opposition. You don't understand. When you hear the word break forth into singing, that means the natural tendency for that situation is not about singing. Oh, I wish somebody understand what I'm trying to say. It's not a natural tendency. Instead of you to see one zero 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 comma zero 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 comma, you are seeing minus. <laughs> and you are telling yourself, ah, I thought the banks forgot to collect their charges. <laughs> And God said, when you see such a position, he said, you should break forth. Because it's not normal. Is somebody ready to break forth today? Break forth into singing. Because it's not normal. Darkness everywhere, opposition everywhere, giants everywhere. Break forth. Break forth. He said, cry aloud. You who have not labored with a child. However, this is the result when you break forth. He said, for more shall be the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord of hosts. Then he now said, enlarge. Somebody say enlarge. Somebody say enlarge. You know the way we read this statement sometimes? We see it as enlarge your tent. No. What did he say? Enlarge the place. You don't enlarge your tent until you enlarge the place. Because your place puts a cap on the size of your tent. The real work is about the place. That is why an average architect, when you tell them, construct or design a house for me, they'll say, give me your property. Give me the design. Because they can go and design something that when you now bring the place, it will be either bigger or too small for that place. So God says, let me tell you. I want to do something powerful inside of you. I want to scatter the things, the seed in your life this season. I want to stretch you forth to the right, to the left and everything. But please, can you go and get a place first? Was that not what he said in Second, Second Kings when he was talking to the, to the woman? He said, go borrow vessels and not of you. Increase the place where I want to put your tent. Go and look for somewhere big. So while oppositions are coming, God is saying, calm down. They are your strategic partners in your next level. Can I pray over somebody here today? Whatever the devil taught for evil will turn around to lift you up. In the name of Jesus. Somebody's amen should be louder than what I just said. Amen. Let them be busy doing what they want to do. The secrets that I'm going to be sharing with you today, you will use it to navigate the odds that the devil will bring against you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, believe in amen. Amen. So let me start today. If you missed Wednesday services, I'll encourage you to go please get the CDs. Or you can go on our YouTube page. It's still there because that will lay the beautiful foundation that I am about to lay this on. So the number one strategic role your enemies will play for you in this year 2023. Don't cry when you see them. You are barren. Don't cry. The darkness is there. Don't cry. The giants are there. Don't cry. Don't bother. Don't worry. There are roles that they are supposed to play for you. 
Remember in Numbers, when those guys got to the boundary of the land that God has promised them, the Bible says Moses called 12 of them and said, go spy for us and come back and give us report. 12 of them came back and 10 said, that place will eat us up. It's terrible. I mean, it's barren. It's this. It's wicked. It's darkness. It's this. The giants are there. Two of them said, no, they are bread for us. They saw the same thing, but different interpretation. They saw the same thing for different interpretation. I can tell you for free that the interpretation of the two called Caleb and Joshua is what I call strategic interpretation. Strategic interpretation simply means they are not the way you see them. And they said they quieted the people and said, you see that land? God has given it to us already. Don't worry. And the rest of them were looking at them. In fact, it got to the point those 10 people really inspired everybody that they should kill Moses and Aaron so that they can go back to Egypt to tell you how bad the reports of those people were. But Caleb and Jethro said, no, 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 guys. You don't get how this thing works. When you are walking with God, you don't walk from here to there. You walk from there to here. Oh, my God. Is somebody listening to me today. You don't walk from today. That's the known with God to the unknown. With God, you walk from the unknown back to the known. That's what a strategic God does. So whatever that is happening to you sometimes, there is this funny attitude of many of us who call ourselves Christian. I have not seen a set of Christians like this Christian of today that is so spiritually dumb unlike our fathers. I feel so strongly for the Gen Z people. Not just the Gen Z as age, but those people who entered Christianity in the last 15 years. You entered into a Jejeure kind of Christianity. Christianity that is bread and butter. Everything about it. Any small thing. Oh, I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go back to Egypt. You are like those Israelites. Everything. Hey, there, there, there is COVID. So people did not return to church until two years after COVID. And they were, they did, if, I'm, I'm, if I'm the one, I'll be ashamed to even say it. Say, no, I can't go back to church. That somebody who is sitting down here will cough and the thing will enter my ears. And you'll be going to the market. You'll be going to, the, to work. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. It's going to get worse. Let me tell you the truth. It's going to get worse. Don't even think it's going to get simple. Everything will get worse. The challenges of the devil to take you out of kingdom assignments will be increasing. So you think it's... A, what, look, if not for the things that those men in the 70s, in the 80s, the Baba the boys of this world, the best in the houses of this world. If not for the things the kind of Copelands of this world did, you think you'll be here crossing your leg listening to me? Where would I even be? People who had time to pray and strategically think about what God wants to do for us. And some of us are here. Now, we are not even telling you to come and pray like them. We're just telling you, take the baton and run. Because let me tell you the truth. The one we are seeing now is kindergarten compared to the one, this is your children that we just prayed for today. May God not make your children become gay in your presence. Amen. Oh, you think it's your fault? No. The challenges we faced is not near what they are facing. Many of them did not plan to do what they are doing today. Trust me. But on their hand, we, we are struggling with technology. Am I correct? We are struggling. We, we, we knew something before. Our brain was analog. Correct one. Hmm. You know. <laughs> Then they now bring ease for us. We can't even fit it. Some of us are struggling to fit it. They, they don't know what to compare with. What they met is what they met. Sometimes when you are talking to them, they'll be like, Kilo Shia, why you? they don't even understand. Stephanie was still like two years old when she started manipulating, less than two years old. So, pew, pew, pew. I said, how did you know? She can't even say it, but she can see it. Just give her the day. She knows what to skip. To leave that thing and go to Coco Melo or whatever it is, Coco Melo or something like that. Those days, if you want to watch pornography in our time, I, I, I make noise, I say, I oh, was a bad boy. Which kind of bad boy? Blah. If you want to watch pornography, you will, you will strategically organize your life. You must make sure your parents are sleeping. Hmm. Whether it's print one or, or you want to do video, and it's not the kind of thing people have today. That time we had what we call VH, is it VHS or call it and bitter mass. You carry that thing and you now put it 
Maybe they don't sleep or they went to work. You now put it and you lock it. You start watching and Nepa goes, hey. Because the, the thought of that thing at all will make you that, let, let's not just put ourselves in trouble. The thought that the fact that this Nepa that their head is not correct, that can go and come. Pastor P, let's not watch you. Because if the thing lock, you, the only prayer point you will have is Lord. Four o'clock is going. <laughs> so you must be very strategic to be evil. In fact, evil self knows. Now you don't need help. Am I making sense here? Your children don't need any help. All they need is to wake up in the morning. And nudity, everything will just begin to batch them, batch them. Anyhow. These are our children. I, I, I'm feeling for these children. But guess what? I'm feeling for their own children. <laughs> the world that their children will live. And some of you don't understand that. This is a time to bet them in prayers. So that you can seclude them. Put a edge of fire around them. That when wicked one comes around them. The fire will be burning them in the spirit. I hear crossing leg. Ordinary to come church. Say, hey, it's darkness. It's opposition. May God help us. Your amen is struggling, struggling. Amen. Don't be lazy spiritually. This year, don't give time for those nonsense. Don't give. Midweek service, take it as an assignment. Don't feel like coming to midweek service. Make sure you come. Don't feel like, say, I don't feel like. This year, I'm going to do my anniversary. 30 years of being saved. I've forgotten the day, Shah, but this year. I've been ministering now for 29 years as a youth pastor from Redeem till now. Every time I think about it, I say, Lord, even with all the fortification he gave me, I am still struggling. Talk more of the people that are not fortified at all. Nothing. We need help. We need help. So whenever you see giants, make up your mind that God has something better in that situation. There's something powerful in that situation. That's why I said, go back to your closet. Don't always cry. Sing. Don't always cry. Rejoice. Scripture says again, I say what? Rejoice again. The devil wants to take away your shout. Your dance will not suddenly stop. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will not take away your shout. It will not take away your shout. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the first role... That darkness and opposition play that is strategic is that they will act as indicators to your greater exploits. Every darkness that will come against you this season will be an indicator that you are in your season of greater exploits. The giants that those guys saw in their promised land was an indicator that they have gotten to the promised land. Because God had already told them, according to um, Deuteronomy, I think, that I'm going to take you to a land that is flowing with milk and what? Honey. So the truth about it is that that kind of thing that will happen in that land has to be created by a system, a working system. So if those giants were not in that land, the chances was that they would pass that land and go to another land. Am I making any sense here? So there is a good role that so-called giants are making. You know, the giants that you call evil, actually, they have their evil tendencies, but at least they have told you that we are here. So this might be the land that God is saying. So they are like signposts. Am I making sense here? They are like signposts. So you are, they are telling you, welcome to the land flowing with milk and honey. Because small, small people cannot produce the things that God has promised you. It will take giants to be there ahead of you. Am I making sense here? So instead of you crying over the giants, why not sit down and thank you for showing me that I'm here? How many of you can tell darkness like that? Thank you for showing me where I would have missed it. I would have gone somewhere else. Ah, thank you that you were here. So instead of crying like the 10 people, why not become like Joshua and Caleb? Who told them that, thank God that the giants showed up because those giants just told us that we have come to the right place. Praise God. 
Ants and non-entities cannot produce the promise of God in your life. Ants and non-entities can't produce it. It must be something powerful also that can produce it. Your treasures are a blessing that are bigger than you. There is nobody that prays for a blessing that is, is bigger than. I've always explained it to us here that every time you wake up, you want to take your giants, you want to take your assignment, you want to take your purpose in life, your purpose assignment is always bigger than you. That is why it's qualified to be called an assignment. That is why it's qualified to become an assignment. If it's not an assignment, it won't be bigger. I use the example of school. When we're in school, when the teachers teach you and they use examples in classes, those examples are quite cheap. Have you noticed it? Very cheap. And you know why they are cheap? Because that teacher has been doing that example for as long as he started that school. He has a note. I mean, every teacher has a note. Am I correct? And that note has one example. If the teacher has been a teacher for 10 years, especially lazy teachers, that is the example they use for your uncle. <laughs> That's the example they are using for you. And the interesting thing about them is that when they finish the example and they want to give you assignments, it should be as if there's no connection. How many of you understand what I'm talking about here? Because by default, every assignment is supposed to be taken home. It's supposed to be bigger than you so that you can call your community, your father, your mother, your sister, your house help. Everybody should help you do that assignment. That is what assignment is all about. And why is assignment that difficult? Because assignment at the end gives results, give marks. Examples don't give marks. Am I making sense here? So if your assignment is not bigger than you, then there is no reward at the end of that assignment. Am I making sense there? So never be scared of your assignment. Never be scared of that giant. In fact, be suspicious that your land is not occupied. Be suspicious. Be suspicious that your land is not, there are no opposition in the things God has told you. Be suspicious. Because every valuable space is protected beforehand. Every valuable space is protected beforehand. Praise God. So one main reason to understand these strategic roles is that it gives you peace. When you understand the strategic roles of God or any situation in your life, while others are saying there's a casting down, because you have heard instructions, you are laughing over the situation. That's why I said barren woman. It's not normal for barren woman to sing, but it must take a revelation beyond the ordinary for a barren woman to see a situation that is not palatable and yet be singing in it. So what is the purpose of strategy? Strategy is to give you peace so that you can begin to laugh. You just be laughing like that. I used the example on Wednesday about when you are playing um, draft with somebody. And if you are like a novice and the person is, you are playing with a professional, you will notice that the person that is a professional will be giving you things to open up you, open you up, open you up. And at the end of the day, the person will just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What does he do? When you are actually eating his game, do you notice that if you are a professional, you just be looking and be laughing? And the guy will look at your face and say, ah, kilo shebo boy now. Why are you not crying? Why are you not troubled? Why are you not this? Why are you not that? Nothing. You are only doing what you are doing because you know the end from where? The beginning. So it is because you know what will happen. That's why you are not crying. When you understand the end, you calm down. And that's what strategy does. These people saw the giants, and while others are saying that, oh, these giants will kill us, they said, no, these giants are bread for us. Why? He said, because God has promised us this in the past. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11. Deuteronomy 28, verse 11. The Bible says, the Lord will grant you abundance, prosperity. I tell somebody who say, amen. He said, he will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, in the young of your livestock, and in the crops of your ground. He said, in the land, he swore to your ancestors to give to you. Key word. The land, he swore to your ancestors to give to you. That was the secret of Caleb and Joshua. Baba swore this thing to us. He told Abraham that he was going to give him a place. He told Isaac that he was going to give him a place. He told Jacob that he was... So he has sworn to our father that that land is our own. So despite what we are looking at, we depend on what he said to us. That's 
what he was saying. So I don't care what the devils are saying. I don't care what the darkness is saying. I'm just sure about what God told my father. And I'm going to stay with that word. I'm going to stay with that word. Praise God. So in that situation, when you look at it, the only thing that comes, in fact, if you are crying, you are deceiving yourself. Like a common example I always give about how you can get peace in trouble. If you can get peace in trouble, was the example of the miracle of Dama. I use that example virtually every time I'm teaching this. All the men understand what I just said, but women do not, but I will explain a bit. The miracle of Daman is the first football miracle, in quotes, that someone who everybody thought had lost, everybody thought that team had lost. All of a sudden, 15 minutes to the end of the match, they became winners. So it was Nigeria playing a particular country in a World Cup. Is it Russia? I think it's Russia. So they were playing and Russia gave them 4-0. In first half, it was 3-0. So we felt, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll be able to win them. It's not football. So by the time we resumed second half, it wasn't even up to one minute. They just gave us four. Everybody left the game. We all went to start doing what we wanted to do. Everybody started. It's only diehard people like me that's this start. Let's just watch. 15 minutes to go. Nigeria scored the first goal. It became 4-1. About five minutes to go, we scored the second goal. If you were in Nigeria that season, you know, all the women I understand, was, they started shouting in the whole country. When it was 4-3, the everybody sitting room was filled. The people were praying in tongues. People were, God, this, this thing must happen. One minute to go, we scored 4-4. It has never happened in football before. That was the first time comebacks started happening. They recorded it. If you type it, you'll see the miracle of Daman, Nigeria's match. The interesting thing about that game was that at the end of the day, whether it's penalty, I don't know what we use, but we won. Am I correct? We eventually won. It's in the Hall of Fame of FIFA. Praise the Lord. <laughs> now, this is the interesting thing about that football. That football caused us pain, anger, annoyance when that match was going on. Today, when you get home, some of you have never watched it before, but you've heard the story now, or even me. Go and Google it and start watching that match again. When you are watching that match and you start from first half, the story will not change. Am I correct? It will still be 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, and 4-0. Will it not be foolish of me to be watching it today? And as they are playing it, I'll be saying, hey, Jesus. Ah, ah. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. And I'll be saying, hey, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh. If you are there, the only thing that is left for you is that, ah, pastor, if you are not my pastor, I will say you don't mad. And many of us don't know that is the way spiritual forces look at some of us. When you are agitated over a game that has ended. Over a game that has ended on God's table. You are more than conqueror. Through Christ who strengthens you. Those are games that have ended. All the darkness that is coming around you right now, they are all strategic darkness. To push you more into your victory season. Am I making sense here today? It's foolishness. So what happens to you when you're watching it on, on um, Google now is some level of peace. Like, don't worry. This is just first half. The second half. Where we will rise again. Can I pray over somebody here? The first half of your life might have been bad. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your second half will be better. Amen. Will be glorious. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So it sends peace into your spirit. You are not agitated. You stay calm and tell God, don't worry. You and God will be discussing. Even though things are not working physically, something tells you that Baba is in charge of this discussion. And that's the way many of us need to walk today. Because the giant has already indicated to us that we are in the right land. Don't move away from here. We have already created the land for you people. Don't worry. The land is here. So peace in your heart is a critical um, way that God communicates that you are a victorious person. So every time you know the end from the beginning, there's this settlement in your spirit. Father, thank you. So that's why when you go into the place of prayer, the Bible says, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But in everything through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God 
the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God that passes understanding will guard your heart. Sometimes, what you should be more interested in is that God should show you the end of a matter so that at the end of the day, while others are saying there's a casting down, your own testimony will be lifting up all the way. Somebody say, believe in amen. Amen. So, peace is the word. When peace comes, so in my mind, I always laugh. Peace in your heart is, a, is critical for the communication of the will of God for you. You know, many of you run up to us as pastors and say, Pastor, what is the will of God? Especially ladies. Especially ladies. You've never asked for the will of God in your life before. Until the day you want to get married. You know, I started looking for pastor. Pastor, I just brought this picture for you. I just brought this leg for you. I just brought this nose for you. Does this nose look like the nose that you saw when you were praying for me? Show me the will of God. Listen to me and listen very carefully. God has not given anybody to know those things. We pray for you. We trust God for you. But you must still have to do it yourself. Yes, so what God does most of the time is to create an atmosphere of peace for you. So that everybody is looking at you and thinking, what's wrong with this guy? But you sometimes, sometimes I will tell you, I'm okay. When I was told to come to Abuja by God, everybody in my pastorate in Daystar then thought I was mad because everybody who had left Daystar then we were all in Lagos. In fact, we had Pastor Ayo Daniel just about one kilometer from Daystar. We had Pastor Chris over 10 kilometers from Daystar. We had Pastor Steve over 15 kilometers from Daystar. Pastor Godman was about 220 kilometers from Daystar. I was the only one who had big head to say, God has called you, go to Abuja. And all the people that were praying with me, all my sons that we were praying together, the day I mentioned that, it's as if God is sending us to Abuja. So one of them says, is it us that you heard or you? <laughs> because the, the reason why they are dealing with me at this time was because they thought I was going to stay in Lagos. But I had to confess to them that I really wanted to stay in Lagos, but I don't just feel the urge of staying in Lagos anymore. I think God wants me to move. To be honest, I was the only one that came. And everything I was doing then, I just told myself, this God, looking back, I told myself, this can only the, be the peace of God in my spirit. Because it doesn't, ma it doesn't work out. Live everywhere you knew, where you know that if I live, this start then was about 20,000 people. Even if I'm an Olodo pastor, 10 people will say, let me follow you. But this one, not one person. But I was still having peace in my spirit. Don't joke with the peace in your heart. It's more critical than any other factor that you are looking for. Sometimes the immediate gratification that you see that is good might be dangerous in the future. I'm telling you the truth. Abraham called Lot and said, Lot, I don't like the way our, our families or whatever you call them, our um, AIDS men are fighting. You know, choose. If you choose the west, I will go to the north, um, to the east. If you choose the east, I will go. And the Bible says, and Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the lush green grasses of Sodom and Gomorrah. On the immediate, Sodom and Gomorrah was one of the best places. Because he looked with his eyes, he didn't care to pray about it, he went there. So today, Sodom was beautiful, but the other part which was Cana was a barren land. And because Abraham already told him, if you choose this other side, I will go this way. So Abraham had no choice. His choices were dependent on lots. So the minute Lot chose this part, he turned this way and entered this direction. So he went to that direction. Years later, look at what happened. The thing shifted. That's why most times when you think with your eyes, oh, I'm not feeling this relationship. Sometimes, some relationship, yes, as long as the guy is not beating you or the woman is not beating you. I don't support abuse, but some of us sometimes, we are too quick to throw in the towel. You know, I know what's happening in the world right now. Because of the so-called abuse, all the statements everywhere, people are hiding under for no reason to divorce. In fact, in developed countries, they have already organized their template now. You don't need a reason when you come to court. You don't need a reason to say, I'm not doing again. Just come there. Judge, yes, sir. I'll say, why do you want to divorce? I woke up this morning and I just... 
The thing not just said to me anymore. So, George said, is that all? Say said, yes, yes, that's all. And they gave that power more to the ladies, not to the men. That's why all of you that are jackpying, you must build your home very well. If your wife not get sense for Nigeria, <laughs> I'm a pastor. The kind of stories that I've gotten, it's not, it's not something to be sharing. Abroad will not open the sense. It will expose it. Do you hear what I'm trying to say? For any reason, people can divorce right now. So for sometimes, when some things are not looking well, it might be for God to teach you how to pray more. Listen, sometimes some troubles come to you because God wants you to pray more. Am I making sense? Uh, you don't understand how it works. For example, how many of you have slept before and you had nightmare? You saw Oju Kalaba pursuing you. Has anybody been pursued before? I mean, I've been pursued though. You, okay, nightmare. I mean, not because maybe you don't have Ojuju Kalaba in your dream. <laughs> but when you have such dangerous nightmare, when you wake up, do you notice that you'll be sweating? Who teaches you how to pray in those situations? Sometimes you can pray for two hours after that, wake, that, after that uh, encounter. Am I correct? You're label, label. Some of you that didn't know how to pray tongues, that's the day starts. Laborish, laborish, leke, lepo, leke, leke. But, ah! May you not see trouble that will take you to that level. <laughs> but sometimes some trouble comes because God wants you to get closer to him. Because he wants to shoot you to the next phase. Look at a catapult. If you want the stone to go very far, you must stretch it. Am I correct? You stretch it very well. So some of us might be in a season of stretching. Don't be in a hurry to jump out. Don't be in a hurry to jump out. That season might be building your inner muscles for the next things of your life. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Let me round up with this. I'll pick it up again from tomorrow, from next week. Are you blessed? Colossians 2 15. Let me talk about peace in your heart. I think I shared this some time ago. Let me just do a refresher course for someone. When you want to know the will of God, pay attention to the peace in your spirit. Pay attention. Some of you have tried to wait and say, oh, Lord, I want to know your will. I want to know your will. And you prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. You've gone to all the spiritual babalawos, spiritual pastors, everywhere. You've gone to all the mountains and valleys. And things are not still coming up for you. And you're like, I'm confused. Let me tell you the way it works. You are the first prophet of your life. Yes. By your words, scripture says, you are justified. And by your words, you are condemned. You stand on your, sometimes you wake up and say, Lord, I will not let you go until you do what? Bless me. Stop all this lazy Christianity. Sometimes you just stay in that place and say, Lord, help me to pass this battle. Help me to go through this thing. I can tell you for free. If you can stay with God in the closet, he will answer you. He will answer you. It's not a wicked God now. Even Jesus Christ was one. He said, I am not that kind of person that you will be shouting, 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 and I will not answer. I answered you. It's you that have unbelief. unbelief. So the scripture says here, Colossians 3.15, sorry, 3.15. 3.15. Look at what the Bible says here. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. The key word for me here is, let the peace of God do what? Rule. Allow the peace of God to rule in your hearts. When you are looking for the interpretation of that dark situation, that confusing situation, find the peace of God, sir. Tell somebody, peace. It's a strong tool for God's advancement in your life. Is that not why the Bible calls him the Prince of Peace? When you walk with God, be very, very particular about your inner man. There's a communication that happens there. That you see, just like I quoted in Philippians the other, the other time. He said, don't be anxious for your darkness. Don't be anxious for the negative opposition. He said, but in everything, Philippians 4, 6, through prayers, and what? Supplication. And what? Thanksgiving. What does he do? He said, let your request be made known to him. How does he answer? 
He said, and the peace of God. So here he's saying to us now that let the peace of God rule over your heart. When you want to know what the interpretation of that situation is, my brother and my sister, ask God in the place of prayer and let's put emphasis on the peace of God in our hearts. So what the Bible was saying in Colossians 3.15 is the word rule there is from the Greek word that means to refree or to umpire. To refree or to what? Umpire. So God said, in the field of your heart, in the field of your game, in the field of your confusion, in the field where you want me to come and represent myself in, in that field, I am an umpire there and the, the whistle that I use is peace. For example, when you are watching a football match, you will see a man that does not dress like the other people. What's his name? They call him the referee. What is the major assignment of a referee? Is to use the whistle to blow for infringement. Am I correct? So that means, if there is no infringement in a game, the referee may never use his whistle. Am I correct? So the call of the whistle is an infringement. There is a fear. There is something that has happened. So this is the same way God is saying. He said, in your life, continue to play your football match. I am the referee. If I gave you an instruction, go. Continue to go. As you continue to go, if I notice that there will be an infringement in your journey, I will blow the whistle of peace in your spirit. I will either bring peace to you or I will take it away from you. Just an indication that you are either in the right path. Am I making sense here today? So come in every day to say, Pastor, Pastor, what is the will of God? Calm down. Even Pastor Eddie has a look for your own will. And you don't get how it works. See, when you come to his treasure house, I try to teach you things very practical. Is this practical enough? You sit down and you just look at yourself. He said, God said, if today you say, oh, you know some of us go very funny and say, Lord, do you want me to go to Canada? Or you want me to go to the UK? Or you want me to go to US? Why you not say God wants me to stay in Nigeria? Why is it not? It, doesn't it show you that you have brain? To know that Nigeria is a, is a very tight country to stay right now. It's your brain that is responding. No, not, there's no spirit in that discussion. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I bring out visa now. I say I want to distribute for all of you. The way you will rush it. Until I tell you that it's visa to Vietnam or, or, <laughs> or Cambodia. Then you now say, Pastor, keep your visa. So that means you have a brain. My wife say, some people will still go that place. <laughs> so, so that means you have a brain to analyze the situation. What God says is that as long as you are with me, as long as you pray with me, the Bible talks about it. For as many that are born of the Spirit are the sons of God. Am I correct? So if you are born of God, you are already a son. When you are a son, you begin to, you will be led. That's what the Bible says. Am I correct? You will be led by the Spirit and you just continue to live your life. Because you didn't wake up this morning, to be honest, and looked into your wardrobe and said, Holy Spirit, should I wear this cloth or this cloth? How many of you did that? Or this cloth? What made you choose your cloth was common sense. Think about it. Common sense. I'm going to church. I need to cover up. I need to cover up as a lady. I need to wear. But if you were going to a swimming pool or you were going on a dinner date, you will still. It's not common sense that interpreted those things to you. Life is about common sense. It's God that gave you common sense. So it tells you use the common sense to continue to walk. So if in your heart, when you were praying, your common sense told you that UK looks like it is UK. Buy the things for visa, do everything, do everything for UK. If it's US, do everything for US. There is no will of God in them. The will of God is you, not the situation. Oh God. 
there is no prosperity that you get that you can tell me is the will of God if it takes you out of kingdom. There is no money you will get. No money that you will get. No private jet that you will have. No house in Asoko that you have. That as you are having them, you stop going to church. You start stealing more. You start lying more. You start doing. And you tell me it's the will of God. I tell you, no. It's not the will of God. Because by default, we have taught you that the will of God is always pleasant. It's always beautiful. No. No. The will of God is about kingdom. It's about heaven and hell. Any good thing that you have in quotes that will lead you out of God's presence is not the will of God. It's not the will of God. That's why I said it's not UK that is the will of God. It's not US that is the will of God. Neither is it Nigeria that is the will of God. What is the will of God is who is working with God. So I can be in Nigeria and still be in the will of God. As long as me and God. Am I making sense here? So as you continue your journey with God, if God notices that UK will be a terrible place for you because it's an umpire, what will he do? He will blow the whistle because there's an infringement he has said. Ah, I hope somebody understands. He will blow the whistle. <laughs> Don't go. He will take away peace from your spirit. You and your husband will now be saying, we bought the formal, but the thing doesn't look like it anymore. Peace has gone. And if it's the right thing, what will he do? He will bring peace to your spirit. While every other person will be saying, are you sure, are you sure, you'll be laughing. I don't worry. It's about God. Can I pray for you today? You will not miss it. In this new season, no matter how the darkness is, you will not miss it. God will use it to elevate you in the precious name of Jesus. Every time you stay in the place of prayer, I pray that God will answer you in the precious name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet and just lift up your voice to heaven and say, Lord, uh, lead me by your right hand. I don't want to be a non-entity. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to be frustrated. I don't want to lose my children. I don't want to lose my calling. I don't want to lose my ministry. As I stand upon your word, oh God, open me to the things that are in your will. Can someone open up his mouth and begin to pray? Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray, pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Do not keep quiet here. Sometimes when we are in this mode, we are activating forces of grace, activating forces of favor, activating forces of, spe of speed, activating forces of exploit. Is someone ready to pray today? Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Rosso prese de gebo shatinia roka popo se prosonia reshe de lede gebo let's pray let's pray let's pray let's pray to pray stop looking at anybody settle issues here tonight settle issues here settle issues on this mountain settle issues on 